A book on karma has been overdue <laughs> because the word karma has gone everywhere in the world, become part of almost every language. But what karma means, the level of misunderstanding and misinterpretation of this word <laughs> is phenomenal. So I thought it's time to release a book on karma as a guide to craft one's destiny. Karma is not about punishment and reward. Karma is not about being sinful or virtuous. Karma is about understanding the legacy of information that comes with our birth and continues through our life, enhances itself to various levels, and impacts every dimension of our experience. The word karma literally means action. That means, as the action that you perform becomes more and more conscious, your destiny also will become a more conscious possibility. That means essentially, you're going where you want in your life. For most human beings, socially, career-wise, they may be going where they want reasonably, but in their experience of life, a whole lot of human beings are not going that way. The level of suffering that one creates within oneself is largely because we are attributing our experience to various things. Karma means action. Action means my doing. So my life is my karma essentially means I am the maker of my life. So this book explores step-by-step -step possibility of how you can take charge of your destiny, how you can craft your destiny by being conscious about various levels of karma that you perform in terms of physical activity, mental activity, emotional and energy activity, karma is being accumulated. If you bring the light of consciousness into these aspects, how this can be transformed, the methods and the possibilities and the consequences of this, this is what the book explores. It's my wish and my blessing that every human being should be able to craft their own destiny. Now, the essence of all this is, first thing is to understand the nature of how existence is happening. Either you can look at this or you can look at the atom or you can look at the universe. If you want to look at the universe, it is complex, it is difficult because you don't have a gallery seat, you know. There is no… Uh, it is not like a stadium, you can sit somewhere and watch the whole universe. Very difficult, you can only see it in pieces. If you want, an a want, want to watch an atom, nobody has seen an atom, do you know this? Do you know this? Even in a super electron microscope, you can't see an atom. We have observed its activity, but we have never seen an atom as such. But we have broken it. We are capable of breaking things that even we cannot see. That's our… we are very proud of this these days <laughs> We can break anything. We can make it or not is a questionable thing, but we can break anything we want. Even if we cannot see it, we can break it. Now what you see and what you do not see itself is a very dicey thing in the sense. <laughs> what is it that you can see? Right now, can you see my hand? Yes. You can see my hand only because my hand stops light. If my hand did not stop this light, if it allowed light to pass through, you wouldn't see this hand, yes? Or in other words, right now your visual apparatus can see only those things which stop light. Anything that allows light through, you cannot see it. You cannot see life, light itself, first of all. Can you see the light that is here? No, only whatever stops light, you can see it. What does not stop light, you cannot see it. Tch, very bad, isn't it? You must be able to see all those things which allow light to pass through.
because they are important things. But right now your visual apparatus had trained to see or capable of seeing only that which stops light. So the whole process of seeing life the way it is means, first of all evolving an eye, a thoughtless eye, an eye which is free of thought. When I say free of thought, it is free from the taint of memory. Right now these two eyes are heavily loaded with memory. So you can see this, if you see a group of people like this, if you just casually look like this, if the… among these hundreds of people, if there is one face that you are familiar with, you will see suddenly that face sticks out. Have you noticed this? Have you noticed this? You are going in a street, there are hundred people standing there. Your friend is among that. If you look here, just this friend's face is more clear than the rest of the faces because this eye works with memory. The more memory you have, the better it sees. No memory, it cannot see. Memory means an accumulated past. Memory means information. Memory means that which does not exist but acts out as if it does. Memories are more real than reality, isn't it so? Yes or no? See, I want you to understand everything in your life is run by memory, not just your computer stick. Everything in your life. When I say memory, not just what you carry here, your very body is a body of memory. Why if you eat a banana, it becomes a masculine body and if she eats a banana, it becomes a feminine body, is simply because of the memory that it contains, isn't it? The information that is stored in this body and that body is different. Same banana, it becomes a man, same banana, it becomes a woman. Yes or no? Huh? Are you eating different types of bananas? <laughs> same thing, same food if you eat, it is becoming one way. In one person it is becoming dark skin, in another person it's becoming fair skin. How? The memory that you carry. Do you remember your great, 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 great grandfather? You don't but his nose is sitting on your face. Your body remembers, isn't it? You may not have no idea who it was, but your body remembers even today. A million years ago, how your forefathers were, still it remembers, isn't it? So what you call as my body is just a body of memory and eyes are loaded with memory. Um, eye which is loaded with memory, an eye which is corrupted with memory cannot see anything the way it is. It will only see things as it is convenient because the software is working from inside. It will not allow you to see anything the way it is. This is what traditionally we are referring to as karma. It is there in your body, it is there in your energies, it is there in the way your chemical reactions happen, it is there in your brain, it is there in your mind, it is there in everything. In the very physical energy that you carry, there is memory because you will see each person's energies behave differently from the other simply because of the type of memory it carries. If you want to get rid of this, it's a long process and if you get rid of this, dismantling of the personality and the body will happen. So another way is to create a distance from it. Just hold it little away. When you want to play with it, you play with it. When you want to switch it off, you must be able to switch it off. So for this, an external view is needed. Right now, your ears are loaded with memory, your eyes are loaded with memory, your tongue is loaded with memory. Why? <laughs> if you are born in Karnataka, if you go to North India, food doesn't taste good 
is because the tongue is loaded with memory. Yes or no? Have you suffered this or no? You went north and uh, they said, alu bhaji, alu <laughs> Alu matter, alu, alu palak, alu parota, alu, 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 they said. You couldn't stay there <laughs> because your tongue is loaded with memory. It wants the same things back, otherwise it will suffer. So what being loaded with memory means is a cocoon of the past is holding you. It will not allow you to even move into the present. A cocoon of the past holds you and you allow it to do this because it feels safe, it creates a cocoon. There is safety, but in safety there is also imprisonment. You are really safe if we lock you up in a safe, isn't it? But the problem is you can't get out, that's the whole problem. <laughs> walls that you build as self-protection, they also become the walls of self-imprisonment. That is the nature of life. If you lock yourself from inside or outside, it's the same thing. As long as you do not open the door, whether somebody locked you from outside or you locked yourself from inside, there is no difference. Anyway you are imprisoned, isn't it? At least somebody locked you from outside, you can at least complain and scream. You locked yourself from inside, you can only be depressed. You cannot even scream, who at whom will you scream? So this process of what we are looking at is the memory imprints itself on all levels. Right up to the elemental level, from the five elements which function here, from just after that memory's work starts. So when we utter the word karma, it is not one simple formula or it's not, you know, people are saying theory of karma. We are not talking about any theory. We are referring to a certain reality. Karma means memory. Action and memory. Past action exists only in the form of memory, isn't it so? Yes? Memory not just what you carry here. Every cell in the body carries its own memory. Why one atom behaves differently from another atom? Though the same ingredients is, it has a memory. A hydrogen atom has one kind of memory, oxygen atom has another kind of memory. Unless you mix them up, they will continue to behave like that. It is in a small circle, you are in a little larger circle, the universe is in a much larger circle, but the same memory rules all of it. So when we said karma, we are not talking about some concept or philosophy, we are referring to a certain reality which is finding manifestation as who you are. The very shape of your body is because of memory. If a bird eats a mango, it becomes a bird. If a worm eats a mango, it becomes a worm. If you eat a mango, you become a human being. Same mango, how many things it's doing, depending upon what kind of memory it carries, isn't it? You, what you call as a seed, if you plant the same seed, if you plant a seed in the same soil, <laughs> here you plant a mango tree, here you plant, plant an apple tree in the same soil, this will only produce apples, this will only produce mangoes. I know there is a, a newspaper picture where a, you know, a jackfruit has become bananas, that's different. Yes? You saw this? Are you all from Bangalore or Devanali? No, you didn't see this. A bunch of bananas are coming out of a jackfruit for some reason. <laughs> that's a freak and that's happened because of some mix-up. We don't know who did the mix-up. <laughs> but essentially, if you… in the same soil, if you plant an apple seed and a mango seed, this will only produce apples, this will only produce mangoes because seed is a certain amount of memory, isn't it? Whether it is a seed of a plant or your father's seed which enter your mother's womb, it is just memory and memory and memory, isn't it so? This is karma. 
and this goes right back, right up to the elemental level, everything is memory. Only the pure element is free from memory. So the idea, when we start, we're starting of Bhutesha, because that's the most important thing, that he mastered the element, that's why we bow down to him, because… because he mastered the elements, he has an eye which has no memory, a taintless eye which sees everything just the way it is. So yoga essentially means developing an eye which is not contaminated by memory, which simply sees. It does not see things the way your memory perverts it. It simply sees everything the way it is. This eye will see those things which do not stop light. Right now these two eyes can only see what stops light. If you start seeing something that does not stop light, that means another dimension of the eye is beginning to function.